This video is going to be about allosteric enzymes. So allosteric enzymes are going to be multi-subunit enzymes that are all interacting with one another and are able to kind of communicate with one another uh, within this larger enzyme. So for example, we'll have this enzyme right here. So this enzyme has four subunits that are all interacting with one another. And so all allosteric enzymes have two different forms that they can be in. They can be in the relaxed form, which is R, which is going to be the uh, enzymatically active form, or they can be in the tense form, which is T, which is the enzymatically inactive form. So this one would be active, so this one can convert substrate to product, and this one would be inactive. And so something that's really important with allosteric enzymes is the concept of cooperativity. So cooperativity is basically telling us that the active sites on the different subunits of this enzyme are all able to uh, kind of communicate with one another. So in the relaxed straight state, when a substrate binds to it, it's going to communicate to the other uh, active sites in the enzyme on the other subunits that a substrate has bound, and it's going to increase the ability of these other subunits to bind to the substrate. And so, for example, uh, also when it's in the inactive state, when one active site changes to the inactive state, that gets communicated to the other active sites, and then they start to go towards the inactive state as well. So moving on to allosteric regulation, you have two kinds of allosteric regulation. You have allosteric activation and allosteric inhibition. So for activation, what happens is you'll have an activator molecule that will come in and it will bind somewhere on the enzyme. And where it binds is not going to be um, in a spot that's different than the active site. So it'll bind in the allosteric site. Let's see, allosteric site, which is where this is binding. And so what this activator will do is it will stabilize the active form of this enzyme. So now this enzyme is really ready to convert substrates to product. And when it does bind to the allosteric site, it gets communicated to all other active sites on these different subunits because of cooperativity. So similar thing happens with allosteric in inactivation or inhibition, um, but it does the opposite. So instead of binding to the allosteric site and activating it, it's going to bind to the allosteric site and inhibit it. So when this binds, it's going to keep all of these subunits in a form that makes it really hard for them to be able to bind to the substrate and therefore preventing this enzyme from carrying out its function. So just review, all allosteric enzymes are going to be multi-subunit enzymes that are all communicating with one another uh, through cooperativity. So in allosteric um, activation, we have our relaxed state, which is our active state. Then we add an allosteric activator, which will bind to the allosteric site and help keep this enzyme turned on um, and able to carry out its function. In allosteric inhibition, we have our tense state. We'll have our allosteric inhibitor bind to the allosteric site, which is going to lock that enzyme into the T state and prevent it from being able to convert substrates to products. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.